Welcome to Lecture Online, and now we're going to continue with statistics and probability, or I should say probability and statistics. And what we're going to do here is go start again with some basic definitions. We're going to talk about some uh, basic properties of probability, and then we're going to systematically show you again all the various ways in which we can do probability. And we're going to do it in a way where you can now tell the difference between them because before what we did was just go through a whole series of different kinds of exercises and examples but now we're going to try and get to the point where you can really see the difference between them. And so again we start with a summary of the basic definitions of probability. So first of all the concept of a sample space. A sample space is something that consists of a, a, a number of outcomes, all the possible outcomes, not just a number but all the possible outcomes are contained in what we call the sample space. And then a sample point is any one of those possible outcomes. So if the sample space has five possible outcomes, you have one, two, three, four, five, five different outcomes like that. And so here we can see that, for example, if we have a single die that we can toss, the sample space may be all the possible numbers you can get on the die, one, two, three, four, five, six. Or you can say the sample space can be represented by you get either an odd or an even number. They're both sample spaces in the same kind of situation. And then we can say that an event is a set of some or all of the outcomes. For example, A is an event, it has two outcomes, one and two, and one and two are part of the sample space. B is another event, and notice it has outcomes two and three, and of course two and three also are part of the outcomes of the sample space. Notice that one is not existent in there, and three is not existent here, but two is common between the two. So there can be an overlap between events, for example. Here's another event. It contains the possible outcomes, one, two, three, four, five, six, which happen to be all of the outcomes of the sample space. And here we have D, which has outcomes one, two, three, and those are both contained in A and in B, but it's a different event because there you can have three possible outcomes, the first three outcomes of the sample space. So that's how we talk about that. Now we can say that we have some symbols here. The symbol U is called union, and this means intersection. So U upside down is intersection. What does that mean? Well, if we have A union B, so we have two events, event A that contains outcomes 1 and 2. We have event B that contains outcomes 2 and 3. So when we talk about the union of A and B, we talk about all the outcomes that either belong to A or that they belong to B or they belong to both A and B. So in this case, you can say, well, 1, 2, and 3 all belong to either A, B, or A and B combined. So you can say that A union B is equal to 1, 2, and 3. Basically, all the outcomes that are in A plus all the outcomes that are in B and including those that are both in A and B. All right, here we have A, what we call intersection B. It's the U that's now upside down. The intersection means that whatever outcome we, were, we put in here belongs to both A and B. So if it only belongs to A, it doesn't belong there. If it only belongs to B, it doesn't belong in that. Only if it belongs to A and B at the same time. That's what we mean by it has to belong to both A and B. If you can see here, there's only one outcome, the outcome 2, that belongs to both A and B. So therefore, A intersection B is equal to simply the outcome that belongs to both a and B. All right, now we have not A. So that's how we pronounce it. A with a little thick mark like that. We say not A. We're looking for all the elements that are not in A. Well, the total sample space is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. A has 1 and 2 as outcomes. So what belongs to the sample space but does not belong to A? Well, that's the remaining 3, 4, 5, and 6. So not A can be written as 3, 4, 5 and 6. So these four possible outcomes are not part of A. Now we have A but not B. So that means that we're looking for all the ones that are in A but not that don't belong to B. Now notice one belongs to A and not to B but two belongs to A but it also belongs to B. So in this case the answer for A but not B is equal to simply the number one. So that's the outcome. I shouldn't say the number one, it's the outcome one. And then we have here something that's called A is a subset of D. Now notice D contains 
1, 2, and 3. A contains 1 and 2, so it's a subset. It's part of the, all the possible outcomes of D, and so therefore we can say that A is indeed a subset of D. We can see that by inspection. And finally, when we take that U, that sideways, and turn upside down now, so it's pointing this way, we can say, and this should be a little bit more smooth, so we should actually write it like this. There we go. We can say that D is contained in Oh, I'm sorry, I should say A is contained in D. There it's kind of a little bit uh, uh, backwards. So you look at the second event first. So you say A is contained in D. And is that indeed the case? And you say, well, it is because D is outcomes 1, 2, 3. A has outcomes 1 and 2. So therefore, A is contained in D. And that's what that symbol means. So now you have a nice overview of the basic concept of probability, the sample space, the sample point, the outcome, and the event. So a sample point is each outcome. An event is the set of some or all outcomes. And then we have the symbolism here, union intersection. And now you can see, based upon the various samples or the various examples of events, what these symbols stand for and how you find the solution. So that's a start. On to the next video.